Hey, we've got a neat one for you today. We traveled a little distance for this one. We've traveled to Fair Oaks, which is a suburb of Sacramento. Now look at what this yard looked like before, where you're questioning whether you can even get any use out of it because it's got a pretty steep slope and uh, not much flat area. If you have a slope in your yard or garden, there's some important considerations that we're gonna deal with here today, so keep watching. I think the key to good landscape design is useful spaces. We don't just make everything pretty. First, we try to figure out how we're gonna use it and ways of accommodating those uses with spaces that improve our lives every day. I'm John Valentino, president of John and Bob's Corporation. Chip Valentino is here. He helped me drive here in our Mustang Mach-E, which was great, except uh, sometimes we don't always find a charging station where we want it. Chip helps me sniff out the best ones, and we made it here in not too much longer than we should have. So the first step is to have conversations with the owners about a program. So we know we have this sloped yard that looks unusable, but how do we want to use it? So we come up with a program of uses. We know we wanted an arbor that we could sit under for shade and protection. And we established that we wanted a little area for growing herbs and we liked the idea of some kind of a decorative flagstone paving. We start to put all of those together. And so the very first step of actually doing the design is figuring out how we're going to manage the slope and how we're going to create space with this retaining wall that will push everything back and allow us to have a flat area where our living occurs. So you don't absolutely need a retaining wall. You could landscape the whole thing, but we needed a retaining wall if we wanted to create these usable spaces. Then if you conclude that you do want a retaining wall, there's lots of materials that you can use. The way we settled on concrete block is we were trying to do something as economical and simple as possible. So we just built this very, very simple concrete block wall and plastered it. And so that can be done pretty inexpensively. And then we painted the plaster with our dragon's breath color. One of the challenges of incorporating a retaining wall is figuring out how to end it on, on both ends and have it look right. You can't just stop it. Well, you can, but it, it doesn't look as good. So what we did here is we ended it with columns. And the columns, we used the stone from the front of the house. It's the same stone that was used ornamentally on the front of the house. And then we had these precast caps made. So they're made out of concrete and they give a little ornamentation to the ends of the wall, which the wall lacks because a lot of times these walls will be designed with a cap like this on the whole wall. But we were trying to make this as economical as possible. And so we built this wall without any ornamentation. It's just, it's just concrete block plastered over. You'll see no, no cap at all. In addition to building the retaining wall to address the slope, the other thing is when you build a retaining wall then you even increase the angle of slope and so you make even more necessary the need to anchor it somehow. You know there's a lot of different materials you can use including jute netting and different things you can purchase to anchor a slope. We used nothing other than our miracle uh, quick growing ground cover carapia and I think we only planted like 10 plants and in that first summer it anchored the whole slope it still looks pretty good. In the winter, it doesn't look as good as the summer, but it still has a nice color to it. And you can see it covered wall to wall, fence to fence, all the way up to the retaining wall. So when it rains, we have no issues with erosion. So we dealt with this slope in two ways, essentially. We anchored the slope with carapia, and we moved the slope to accommodate our creation of useful spaces. So you see this carapia doing a fantastic job, very functional planting in this case, anchoring the soil. We just did another one that you can tune into where we showed an employee of mine that took seven little sick little sprouts of carapia that we had left over from a job and in the middle of the summer he planted them where he used to have a bunch of rocks. He only waters it every other week. Check out that video, you'll see how it covered up that space beautifully. Obviously these fences we'd like to be less prominent over time. This planting is fairly new, a little over a year old, but what we have is screening shrubs that will grow as tall as the fence. What we hope to do is look at green shrubs that'll screen this fence all the way around. We've got 
a number of plants achieving that. Sweet bays, sweet olive, some pineapple guava on one end. So we've got three or four screening shrubs that over time will um, provide the backdrop for this yard. In the meantime, instead of looking at an ugly fence, painting it dragon's breath is an idea that I really like, especially on new gardens. Look at the difference between the neighbors and this garden where we painted it dragon's breath and then you can see the neighbors that isn't painted dragon's breath and is starting to look kind of old and weathered and not real attractive and in small gardens like this it's dominated by the fence because that's what you're looking at all around you by painting it this dragon's breath color it becomes more recessive while we wait for the plants to take control here and take over and make it so we can look into a green backdrop rather than an old fence backdrop. Sometimes we build those arbors out of metal, but that is more expensive. In this case, we just built it out of wood, made it again as simple as possible, and we painted it the same color as the fence and the same color as the wall, which is the dragon's breath color. And so we're not trying to bring a lot of attention to it, but make it coordinated with the whole garden. In order to provide shade, they put the two by two rafters on top that do a good job of providing shade. And then they use a solid plastic cover for a water protection. So it is not only shady under there, but it is also protected from rain. Let me think real fast here on this two types of stone here. Rocky Mountain Gold and OK Canyon. OK, I got it. We ended up paving this whole thing with a flagstone paver. And we used two types, so we have a little interest in the color. This is a combination of Rocky Mountain Gold and Bouquet Canyon. Bouquet Canyon is more of a gray color, and then Rocky Mountain Gold provides more color accents with different silver and gold colors. Another thing that I think really adds to it is we used a colored mortar and it comes actually pre-mixed in this color. And, and then we sealed it, so that brings out the color a little bit uh, in the mortar and the stone itself. But you don't have to use flagstone. Flagstone actually is one of the more expensive options. If you have somebody install it, it's gonna run 25 to $30 a square foot. So that's expensive compared to, you could use plain concrete with some kind of interesting scoring pattern. Probably a contractor would do it for eight or $9 a square foot. You could even use that very inexpensive DG with the pea gravel on top for a surface like this, and then that's permeable. Lots of different options. We get a lot of questions about side yards. How do you address them easily and inexpensively where they're low maintenance, but they look reasonably good? Many times you want some kind of planting in front of the windows. Both of these side yards I think are interesting. Very simply done where the paving is just like the path we showed you in a previous video where we used decomposed granite and then we used the vibratory compactor and compacted in pea gravel. So these side yards are nice and simple, clean, easy to maintain and durable over time. We've got a lot of interesting plants on this job. We're here on November 30th, the last day of November, so a lot of the plants aren't looking in their prime. But we have this perennial garden, which is right up next to the house, still looking pretty good. It has an interesting eastern red bud called Merlot, which has those deep Merlot colored leaves. And then under it, we have blush pink Nandina and a collection of variegated Tulbagia and uh, Limonium perezii, which is a neat plant that has a little bit of bloom on it right now, with some blue fescue, some gazanias, some juga that still is blooming a little. Quite a variety of perennials that are still looking good. Then on the slope, we have other types of eastern red bud. They're actually a different color than the Merlot. There's two of them, and they are the rising sun eastern red bud. Spectacular colored leaves and beautiful flowers in the springtime. Another neat plant we have here that does great in this climate is a multi-trunk Tuscarora crepe myrtle, which blooms like crazy. Doesn't look like much right now, but looks great in the summer. And in front of those screening shrubs, we use a lot of ice cap roses, which is like a dwarf version of iceberg rose and blooms all the time. It's even blooming a little now. 
a garden like this with this kind of slope, you want to make sure the yard drains well. We put in a drainage system that takes all the water to the front. And soil that drains well is important, so we used our products extensively. We focused on the soil quality by using blend right from the start of the project, before planting and during planting, kind of broadcasting it everywhere and then focusing on each individual plant. For a one gallon plant, usually we'd use about a cup and for a five gallon plant, we'd use about three cups. And then we'd follow that up with a penetrate liquid biotiller everywhere. And this creates life in the soil. That's the key to healthy soil. So if you think this video by Chip and I was helpful today, please like, comment, and subscribe. What else was I supposed to talk about? If you have questions about your specific garden, let us know in the comments. We'll try to help you. Also, if you like the idea of us going outside of our area to look at gardens, maybe you want to invite us to your garden and we can do a video there about your amazing John and Bob's results. We hope you're all having those amazing results. Results. We're hearing about some of them and they're always a lot of fun to read. If you're intrigued by our Carapia ground cover and want to learn more about it, check out our other videos on Carapia where we look at them in slightly different situations than this one.